Why did you leave me? I was scared. So I did what scared children do. I ran away. Unless I was rich, I was gonna come back and get you. But it didn't work out how I planned. If it could just pop him back up in your life would be worse than leaving it in the first place. It wouldn't have been worse. God is so grateful. He decided that a child should be with her mother. I'm asking for a chance. I saw my mom today. Did she reach out to you? Nah. Because she never thought to come find you. Just because you blood with somebody don't mean they deserve to be in your life. Families earned you. It ain't just a given. Oh, work boots, sweatshirts. A young woman, she look like a young woman. You are stunning. They said anything about hitting or nothing like that. Well, shit like this, it's gonna hurt for as long as you live. This sin in when you decide to abandon your own daughter? I'm gonna save you. I'm trying to give you a better life. I was fine without you. I don't need you. I never needed you. I love you. You don't. Yeah. Look, I know this is probably awkward. Maybe even. I figured I'd talk to you mother to mother. Yesterday, Laverne assaulted. Wait, where are my guys? Get down! What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Mark Dark. And I'm back with another video. If you're new, if you love power, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Like the video and leave your theories, comments, everything down below. Now today we're going to be talking about Power Book 3 Raising Kanan. And we're going to be talking about your girl Kenya. This is the Remembering Kenya video. We had to talk about Jukebox's mom because we know she played a vital role this season in Jukebox's storyline. Now you guys, make sure you checked out my last few Remembering videos. Uh, we did, of course, Sam. We did the Remembering video to Miss Renee, and we also did the remembering video to Zisa. So check those videos out, continue to keep this up updated, and I will continue to drop these videos for you guys. Now the remembering Ro Rail video is gonna be the last one for season two. So after I do him, it shouldn't be anybody left, and then we can focus more on season three. But man, let's talk about your girl, Kenya. She came into this season, and we knew about Kenya coming in, played by Latoya Luckett. She did a hell of a job. Shout out to her. Um, she killed the role. And playing Jukebox's mom, we knew it was going to be something up. We knew she wasn't in Jukebox's life. We got the full story on why Kenya left in the first place. Going back to season one, we knew she left, and apparently she was with some basketball player, right? We know Marvin and Lulu got into an argument in season one. Once that was mentioned, now she went to California to pursue her music career. She gave Jukebox the answers that she needed, and that was she was scared. She wasn't ready to be a mother yet. So she ended up just leaving and not returning, right? So it made it more interesting when she did come back. We know Kenya was a wild girl. She was a wild girl, right? And she lived a hell of a lifestyle. So for her to come back and get into the church and try to change her life, and I believe she was there in New York for about three years, if I'm not mistaken. And that whole time she was there, she never even went to Jukebox to try to fix things, to tell her, like, look, I'm here. You know, I want to, you know, tell you the truth and I want to fix things. Jukebox had to go to her in order for Kenya to actually, you know, open up. And this is why Rock was mad. Rock was like, so you went to her. She didn't come to you. She didn't come find you what she should have done. Kenya didn't do that. She was like, hell no, nah, I'm trying to change my life. I'm trying to forget about the past. Right. But no, Jukebox decided to get that truth, just like Kanan decided to gain more truth about his pops. And once Jukebox found out the truth, she was like, OK, I guess we can make this work. She decided to give her mother a second chance and forgive her and see where it can go. Now, once Kenya and Jukebox started to hang out, we can tell by Kenya's facial expressions that she wasn't feeling some of the things that Jukebox was doing. I mean, the clothes that she was wearing, the people that she hung out with, she knew like, hell nah, she can't be living like that. And to her, she felt like her daughter may like girls, but she wanted to prove it. She wanted to get that 100%, you know, proof. She wanted to test her daughter. So this is when she sent Corey in. We knew it was something. Everybody was wondering how Kenya knew 
it was different fan theories going on about how she knew. Well, she gave us the real answer, or at least Corey gave us the real answer by the end of the season on how Kenya sent him in to go on a date with Jukebox to see if everything went went the right way because she knew, you know what I'm saying, most likely she liked girls because Kenya liked girls, at least that side of the family did from what Marvin was talking about in season one, right? Now, once Kenya allowed that church to do what they did to Jukebox, a lot of the fans said, you know what, Kenya gotta go. I mean, she did that. She allowed that to happen. I mean, what the hell is going on? Everybody needs to go. Everybody can go that was in that scene that allowed that to happen. I mean, they was trying to beat the gay away. I mean, they was doing everything that they could to mess Jukebox's head up, in my opinion. I mean, you're not going to help her by doing that. But they did it, and we know what ended up happening. I'm glad your girl Jukebox got paid back on Corey beating down. That was funny as hell. Marvin finally got to talk to Kenya, and he checked her pretty much, told her what she needed to hear. She didn't like it, so she smacked him. We know Jukebox came in and stopped him from going off, but still, she needed to hear the truth. Like, what the hell are you doing? You allowing all this stuff to happen to your daughter? You come back into town. You've been in town for three years. Jukebox has to come to you. Like, really? Doesn't make sense at all. Now, the crazy thing about this is I believe Kenya probably could have still fixed this. And we talking about without all this stuff happening with the church and stuff. Kenya could have came back and got herself together and, of course, probably fixed things with her daughter Jukebox because Jukebox was willing to have things work out with her moms, right? Now, for Marvin, it probably would have took him a little bit longer. We know Marvin was in anger management. He changed his lifestyle, some of the things that he's done. Not everything, but for the most part, when it comes to his anger, he's been trying to fix those things. So maybe things could have worked out in the long run, not at first, because Marvin would still be pissed off. But as I told you guys, Kenya had an opportunity to most likely fix all of this. Now, I'm glad that Jukebox called her out on her stuff. When Marvin checked her, she needed that. She needed to hear it, not just from Marvin, but she needed to hear the truth from her daughter, Jukebox. Now, I don't understand what the hell Kenya was thinking. I'm going to pop up at Rock's house late at night and try to talk to her, try to see if she can help me out. I mean, she walked to the door talking about Laverne did this and that. She assaulted me. Like, are you crazy? Like, do you see the sun out? No. Why are you walking up here? I mean, you look like you're about to do something. This is why I told you guys, I don't know what the hell she was doing. I mean, she was walking up there like she was about to do something. But no, she really decided to go to try to talk to Rock at that time of night. And then the Italian showed up and they did what they supposed to do. Spray up the spot. Kenya, she ended up getting hit. And that's all she wrote. I mean, it is what it is. I didn't necessarily think that Kenya would die this season especially how everything ended. I mean, I thought she would just leave or something, um, but getting smoked like that, no. You know what I'm saying? I didn't think the Italians would do her in, but as I told you guys in the past, Power has, you know, a history of bringing in characters for a season only, and they build them up or we'll see a storyline out of them for the entire season, and then boom, they gone. They get smoked, and we've seen that from so many characters this season. Cartier Dunn's. We saw him in season two. He got smoked in season two. Zisa, we saw her in season two. She got smoked in season two. In Kenya, we saw her in season two. She got smoked in season two. Hell, Power Book 2 Ghosts. Mecca built him up like he was at the top of the food chain. He was the top dog and then smoked him out at the end of the season. So this is what they've been doing. So I guess any of these new characters that show up in the future... Don't be surprised if you see them get smoked by the end of the season. That's just my take. And I'm just using it based on the history alone. But you guys let me know, man. Like I told you, Latoya Lucky, she did her thing playing Kenya. I can't wait to see the aftermath of the hits the Italians did on everybody. And how Jukebox and Marvin are going to feel after what happened to Kenya. We shall see. But I want to thank you guys once again for all the love, all the support. And I will catch y'all on the next one. But let me get up on out of here, man. It's your boy Mark Dart. I'm out. Peace.